and welcome to your Pink Box this month. My name is Catherine Gray. I'll be your teacher today and this is my guest artist Morgan. She's been in here with me a few times on these lessons and I think she really enjoys them and she's getting really good too. I hope you all at home feel like you're improving with each project each month. Um, I love this project. I just had a big group of women here the other night painting this in the studio and everybody loves it and can't wait to take it home. Um, Morgan, you've been wanting to paint this one. I have. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah. You're going to have to start a little wall in your room with all your paintings hanging out. I definitely will. Yeah. So this does, it looks like it's going to be hard, but I will walk you through it step by step and we'll keep it easy and we'll see you back here at step one. Okay, Morgan, here we go. We're going to start this pretty spring bouquet of tulips. Um, first thing we're going to do and sometimes I have new students, well every month I have new students, so some of you who've been around a while will have to hear me repeat some things. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet, and to do our drawing we're going to use this color called Yellow Ochre, and it's a drier pigment, so it dries kind of fast, and thin it out so it's just going to air dry. That's not thin enough, I'm going to get that a little thinner. So those little dots we're making can air dry while we're talking here. So I'm gonna make a dot right in the middle of each side of the canvas. And that's just gonna be so we can talk about where things are situated and um, where our parameters are. So for example, I'm gonna come up from this bottom dot at the center, and I'm gonna come up about a half an inch and draw a line, and that will be the bottom of the vase. And I believe the top of the vase may be right let me see, right above center, just slightly above center. Right about there. And the sides of the vase, it looks like it would come in from the left side about an inch and a quarter, and the same on the right. So now I'm gonna connect these dots. So the first part, I'm gonna draw the top of the vase as a kind of curved shoulders is what I call that. Curved shoulders. And then it comes down at a little, not quite straight, but see a little bit of an angle to get the shape of that more uh, Asian pottery. Um, and then I'm going to draw the bottom, but it's not a straight line, it's slightly curved because we're looking at a curved shape. And that's about it for the basic shape of the vase. So now I'm going to go into, you know, you can pause your video and catch up if you need to, if it take, it's taking you a little longer to get the shape of that base in. And the shape doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to paint right over all this, all these lines. They're just kind of guidelines for us. I'm getting a little more of the yellow ochre and I'm going to start by drawing the three tulips. So I often say tulips are kind of shaped like a little wine glass. And we're, the wine glass is tilted towards us on each one of these, so we're kind of looking down into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw, maybe starting at about almost an inch over, I'm gonna draw the first two, the top of that wine glass shape, this little oval. And then let's go draw the second tulip. And it's looking over this way, and I got a little too much paint on there, but that's all right. And then this one's kind of looking off to the side. And then all I have to do is draw the little bowl shape of your wine glass down below each one of those. And again, pause the video if you need to right here and you can catch up on those three shapes. In the meantime, I'm going to go, go ahead and go along and start with the leaves. The first two, this one is a nice big one, just like a teardrop kind of shape. And I do have it crisscrossing over the shoulder of that base to kind of give us a nice composition. So these two are just kind of teardrop shapes and I am going over the side of the base because that will give us a nice smooth composition as we look at it without having that base be completely showing. And, and often in a flower arrangement, those leaves do fall over the edges and it looks pretty. So the next two leaves, I'm going to put this one in that goes over under the tulip, but over the first leaf. And it goes off the edge. It's just going to curve and go off the edge. 
Maybe it comes down in here a little bit. And then the next big leaf is this one that's coming out of the back and going off the edge over here. I'm gonna come it out from behind that tulip. And then the next big leaf is this one that's behind these two and it comes all the way and fills down these shapes down in here. And the last one is this one that's going off the edge behind that tulip. So this one's behind. And we're gonna let you all pause. That's it for the drawing. It's just gonna be just, it's a simple guideline for us. Nothing too elaborate. Just kind of showing us basically where our shapes are gonna go. And we'll pause here and meet you back at step two. Okay, we're back here for step two, which is going to be the background. And during the break, Morgan reminded me that we needed to put this line in for the table. That's a, about the one quarter line. So just drew that in. And now we're going to make the background color. We're going to make uh, this beautiful light blue. So I'm going to take my palette knife, the one I sent you in your first box, and it's only bendable at the very um, first half of that tip. It's, only, it's like a spatula in your kitchen. So I'm just gonna do all my work with just that bendable part um, and not get the paint back up in here. It doesn't help you much. That's maybe when you're painting with your palette knife, which is a whole nother process. But when you're mixing with your palette knife, you just use that front tip. And let's pick up a good amount of white. I'm gonna pick up two piles, a good amount of our white. I'm gonna load those up. So I'm gonna make two shades of white for the background. I'm sorry, two shades of blue for the background because I think it's prettier to have a little uh, variety in that blue. So it's not all one shade. You don't have to be, you know, think of it as painting a room in your house where it's all perfectly one shade. So I'm gonna reach over here to the first of those two blue, the one that's on the left, and that's called Cerulean. And I'm just gonna get a little tiny, tiny uh, bit of that and mix it into that white with the top half of that palette knife. Pretty color. I like that. The second pile, I'm going to pick up just a little more of that blue. It's going to be just a little darker on this pile. So I use not just the tip of my knife, but I scoop it up with the side as well and then smooth, smooth it back out. And then I kind of, once it gets too spread out, it's hard to work with. So I kind of scoop it up every once in a while and put it back in, into a pile. There we go. I think we've got two, now I've got two nice shades of blue. And I am ready to start painting. How are you doing? Yep, you're good, good, good. Yeah. Probably gonna need some more, Morgan. Make those piles a little bigger. Or at least the lighter pile. Because um, there's not a lot of background, but there's quite a few little areas here. So I'm going to start painting and um, I want everybody at home to be using their brush like a brush and not a pencil. So hold back the brush about three quarters of the way back and let it let the brush stroke come from your shoulder so you're not putting pressure on the brush. We don't want to put pressure on the brush because we want these brush strokes to look really thick. So I'm sweeping, I'm pulling the brush forward, just sweeping like, like just pulling a brush toward a broom towards you. And then I'm gonna lay that paint down at a nice shallow angle. I'm not gonna hold my brush up high and try to draw with a trip tip. I'm gonna spread it just like I'm using a big wide spatula. I'm picking up the lighter color now and just kind of crisscrossing it and spreading it on top of the darker color just to get some pretty variety going in there. And I'm gonna go up pretty close to my gold drawing. And that gold drawing is gonna keep drying for a while. So I'm just going up to those edges and filling in, alternating the two blues.
lighter blue. It's just so pretty to kind of crisscross those blues so you see the two different colors. If it turns a little green when you hit one of those yellow ochre dots or lines, that's okay. We can continue to let that dry, um, that thin gold paint dry and cover it up at the end. And sometimes since I am not painting on an easel with these projects, I put my finger on the corner to kind of hold them down, keep them from moving around. And I'm trying to, trying to hold my brush back, keep my brush low, spread that paint. You should, you should hear nothing but paint. I mean, it should be no sound of a brush cut, touching the canvas because you just want to hear that icing, that, that creamy icing spreading along. The canvases are kind of rough unless we're painting with linen. They uh, do have kind of a rough texture. So if you put a big glob of paint between the brush and the canvas, you'll, you'll have nothing but paint sliding along. So, let's see, I think I, this leaf go, oh, that's a dot. Okay, so I'm gonna go up here. I just love that bright blue color behind the flower arrangement. So Morgan's been coming to the Tuesday night class. She's been doing really well. And I think she enjoys it. Unfortunately, sometimes work gets in the way, but that's true of most of us in this world for most of us in this world. And like I said, I had a, a paint and sip night at the studio and a lot of ladies come in, sometimes some gentlemen, but this one, this particular project drew a lot of ladies in because of the pretty flowers. And we had a really nice big night of painting in here. So you can see here where I've kind of just left this pretty little white stroke laying against the dark and Morgan's doing the same thing. And it just looks, it looks pretty. And that's about all I'm going to do for the background, except for now I'm gonna do the tabletop. And again, pause, here's a good spot to pause, and then we can wait for you to get caught up, or you can catch back up with us, I should say. So what I did here on the tablecloth, I'm, I'm saying it's kind of a white tabletop, but I tinted it to a pretty lavender. The lavender's a cooler color than the warm of the flowers and the warm of this warm blue and um, the yellow and the green leaves. So, so I thought, well, let's get a little cool temperature going in here. So with my knife, I'm gonna pick up the rest of my white. May need to get out some more in a little while. And I'm going to add two things to that. So red and blue make purple. And you wanna stay away from that warm red. You'll never make a purple with this warm red. You wanna scoot over here to this very cold, what they call purple red. So it's already got the word purple in it. And I'm going to use just a minute bit, like that much. And that's gonna go a long way. And for the blue, I'm gonna use this very cool blue. Again, that warmer blue that we just used is gonna make a muddy purple. So you wanna keep purple in the cool red, cool blue. I'm picking up much more of that purple, of the blue. So it's probably like 20% of the red and 80% of that blue, and I made it way too dark. So it looks like it's time to get out some white paint, Morgan. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I'll do? I'll save that dark for the shadow right here. And there's some details. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this pile in half take part of that away to be the shadow that's gonna be right here. And let me put a whole bunch of white back in. We can see we can make a light, pretty light lavender. It's gonna be the dark, cool red and the dark, cool blue. So first thing I'm gonna do is pick up, you know, again, holding that brush back, sweeping forward, spreading the icing on that canvas. And I thought I might, it might be a little dark. I'm going to pick up some white and just spread some white in there. It's so pretty. I can't wait to decide on next month's project. It's always so much fun. Do I do anything? 
So cut that in half and, or even third, take a third of that and then add some more dark blue and that you're going to make your purple out of that. There you go. And then add a whole bunch more white and you should be there. And I was kind of trying to keep this a, a whitish tablecloth, so I'm, I might, lavender got a little dark, I'm just going to streak some white through there. And I'm going to take that color that I made a little light while ago that was too dark, and that's going to be my pretty shadow color. I can give you some of that, Morgan, because I have a lot. So this can be your shadow. Right over here. We do that in class a lot. We just, if we make too much paint, we just, but anybody need this? What do you think about that color? Um, cut it in half and add a little more white. Just a little bit. And then you can kind of doctor it up from there. And I cut piles in half a lot because that way you can, it's easier to doctor them up and maybe reuse them somewhere else. And I've got a little white left. I think I'm just going to streak it around in that tablecloth. So this could be, since this is a May project, this could be a Mother's Day centerpiece or gift. Or a gift to a friend. Or like I said, Morgan might want to hang it on her wall <laughs> next to your champagne bottle. Yes. And a couple other projects that you've painted. So I will let you all pause here. That is literally, that's it for the background. I got the shadow in, I've got the tabletop, and I've got the blue background behind the flowers. And we'll take a break and see you at step three. Okay, we're gonna start the vase. And I always confuse my students a little bit by the way we do this, so just follow along and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, we're gonna have almost, we're gonna start literally with three stripes. We're gonna have a stripe of white, a stripe of light blue, and a stripe of medium blue. And we're definitely using the cool blue again. We're staying away from this beautiful warm cerulean blue. So, uh, oh, turn the white. You already got yours. I will load my white. And so I'm gonna pick up white. That's gonna be stripe number one. And then I'm gonna pick up a little more white and we're gonna add a little bit. Let's just start with a little of that deep, cool navy blue called ultramarine. And that got a little dark too fast. So I'm gonna move that down here to pile number three to be my dark. white so there's a nice kind of white medium light and medium okay so I'm going to take the white and make sure my brush is cleaned out in the water here I'm gonna pick up the white holding that brush back sweeping that paint out along and Spreading that paint like icing right down here at a low angle. And you can really feel that paint spread. If that yellow gold drawing is still a little wet, it may turn your paint a little gold right there. We'll just keep, we're just gonna keep moving. So the first one third of the base is just white. And then I'm going to go into my medium blue and just pull a whole one third section in the medium blue. We, I always get so relaxed in here, I start talking really quiet. <laughs> and then I forget that people at home are trying to hear me. And I'm trying to make a little more of that medium blue. And then tap the edges where the two meet and just blur it. So you don't see actual stripes. I'm just going to kind of blur that together. 
We are both making noise with our brushes, so we need to get more paint underneath them. And going into the darker section. Yeah, we need to slow down and get more paint so we don't hear that brush moving. There we go. So I had some paint left over from the um, tablecloth. I'm going to use a little of that. Pretty similar color, actually pretty much the same color. So this is what they say, we have a saying, the pattern, I'm sorry, the fabric goes in before the pattern goes on. So we're painting pretty much the back, the, the basis of, let's call it the fabric, uh, the main carrier of, of the pattern is this jar. So there's the jar with the pretty light coming from the left, getting falling into a nice shadow on the dark side. And then we'll be ready to put the pattern on. Now this is where we're gonna we're gonna kind of switch our, our frame of thought because we're gonna really be doing more drawing with our brush than we are painting. So in the beginning I said let's get used to painting with our brush, but really using that long flat side of that brush. Uh, now we're, I am going to get into a little bit where we're going to draw. So the drawing requires using this very chiseled end of the brush. So I'm going to make sure my brush, that's why I love these number four flats, that nice chisel end of the brush. I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to just tap it into my dark navy blue. And I've got a little bit, I'm just going to show you on my palette here, where I'm just going to be able to draw some lines. So those are like the stripes at the top of the base. We're just going to have a little bit of paint on the tip of that brush, and we can draw these little, they're, they're curved a little because they follow the shape of the base, and I really moved my curve way out of whack there. I did a kind of a double stripe at the top, and then maybe I'll jump down and do one a little lower. And then between the double stripe at the top, I did kind of a little pattern, little diagonals or something. I actually did have some beautiful blue and white porcelain bases here that I was using as a pattern. And then I'm going to pick up more and I'm going to do a curved line along the bottom. It's starting to look pretty. Yeah, it is. And then I'm going to do another stripe along the bottom. I did one at the very bottom and then one about a quarter of an inch, half an inch up. So people think you need a small brush to do detail. The hard thing about a small brush, or the unfortunate things about a small brush, is they don't hold enough paint and they're not strong enough to kind of drag all the way across that base. So this number four will do the job. So. Very pretty, Morgan. Then the next thing on my little jar, there's kind of like two little houses, like a little village, indication of a little village. So I'm gonna start by making the little triangular shaped roofs of the two houses. So there's like one there, one there. And then I'm just gonna pull down two lines via front of the house. A line for the roof. The old trapezoid for the roof there. No, oh, I did that again. I got the house too far over, but that's okay. I'll just put this one up on the hill behind it. This. A trapezoid for the roof. And to get those blue roofs, I'm going to switch from drawing mode with my brush and go to painting mode where I have it on the flat side of the brush. I'm going to gently, gently pull down that blue to be a dark blue roof. And now I'm going to use the corner of my brush to do some drawing, maybe some windows, a door, 
You have two cute little houses. Good job, Morgan. Yep, Morgan's, Morgan's got a real knack for this. Perspective is hard, and there's a little bit of perspective involved on those houses, but it's, hard. it's all about keeping lines parallel. And if you keep, if you remember to keep things parallel, if something's going this way, at the end of the roof, it's also going to be going this way. So that'll keep you from getting too out of whack. And then over here, it looked like there was something like a little island or a little hill or mountain. So I'm just going to squiggle that in that way. And it looks like on my base that there were maybe three trees kind of growing out of it. So I'm just going to take that chisel and maybe make the tree in the middle taller. I'm going to add some little leaves in. And down here, I just did some squiggles that looked like it could be a little river. Up here, I always do some little flying birds. It's fun if you look at blue and white porcelain, you'll see all these little um, scenes that they paint. And then in the middle, there was kind of a big mountain in the background there. And again, maybe a little river coming down. And over here, it looked like it was maybe some evergreen trees, maybe up against the mountain again. And so this side isn't all completely blank over here. I'm gonna scribble there and maybe, maybe even get a little darker in here. You see, I'm kind of making it up, but if you could follow along just a little. Feeling a little darker. I just smudged one of my lines, so I'm just going to go back and correct it. The last step in my projects is when we go back and really take a look at what needs to be corrected. We don't don't worry about it now. Just save it all for later. And who knows? Maybe later you won't have really anything to correct. That would be wonderful. But I'm pretty happy with this. So I'll take a break here and pause and we'll let Morgan get caught up with her drawing over there. She's having fun putting her details in. And we'll take a look. She's doing a great job. And we'll see you back here at the next step. Okay, Morgan did a great job. And it's kind of mind-boggling to think you're painting a pattern over all this wet paint, but it works and it's fun and it's so rewarding when you're done. And so now we're gonna go into the greens and we're gonna to have to make quite a few greens. I don't think that either green that comes with the kit is really what we want today. So we're gonna do, do it the old fashioned way and that's, that's no problem. We're just gonna use blue and yellow make green. So first thing I'm gonna do is with my uh, palette knife. I'm going to pick up some of this yellow and I'm going to make a light, light green. That's going to be some of this pretty light green. And we're going to make maybe either at least three, maybe four shades of green. So in this first pile of yellow, I'm going to add just a little blue. And a little blue will go a long way to make that. It's again the dark, the dark navy blue. And that will be our lightest yellow. And it won't be actually be our totally lightest because we're gonna come back at the end and maybe make some of these really super high light highlights, but that'll be shade number one for now. And then I am going to get some more yellow. So I think I'm gonna make another version of that lighter green. Um, just a little bit of the blue. Maybe see if we can't make a little bit lighter color. Yeah, more yellow. Especially in spring with tulips, you want to have some of that pretty bright spring green. There we go. I like that better. So the light yellow, the lemon yellow that you all have from your kit with just a little bit of the ultramarine navy blue. And I would, I would try to memorize the names of the colors and where they are. 
if you want to follow along a little quicker or faster, maybe just while you're watching TV one night, keep that palette diagram in front of you and just keep going over the names of the colors. Um, I'm gonna add a little blue to that first color so that gets back down to my medium green, that's better. And then I'm gonna make a very dark green by starting with the dark blue. And adding in just a little yellow. Let's see if I can get a little more yellow out of here. Yeah, so we're starting with dark blue for the darkest color. And let's get the yellow out of there. Don't need much, we're just gonna have a little bit of yellow. And that's gonna give us a really pretty dark green. And we're gonna want it dark because, you know, and when you look at a flower arrangement, there's a very shadowy dark area. In fact, I'm gonna take a little of that dark, move it over and save it for these really dark darks that go in between the flowers. Everyone's always afraid to put those darks in on any painting, but even on a, even on a flower arrangement, it's not gonna be nearly as pretty if we don't get those really dark darks in there. And I think I'm all set. I've got a light, a medium, a dark, and then a really almost blackish one. Okay, Morgan. Morgan's all caught up. I hope you all at home are joining us now because you're caught up. And we are going to make three colors for the tulips. They're kind of a corally red, not quite pink. Kind of pink. Pinky coral red. <laughs> so what we're gonna do for the first shade, let's take some of our white. I think I have a little white left too. And I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of your brighter red, that should be your cadmium red or vermilion. Those are both the same color. We'll say either vermilion or cadmium red. And we're just gonna make a really light shade. Now I'm gonna add just a little more. I'll save those kind of white. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of that purple red too. See how it's kind of peachy, Morgan? Mm -hmm. Let's add a little bit of that purple red so it'll get it more down to like a kind of a coral color. So I guess I'm, I'm doing white and a tiny speck of both of the reds. I double checked Took a little break there and double checked. We're gonna use white for the lightest shade and a little bit on the instructions on this project I put, uh, let's put out scarlet instead of vermilion. That's your other bright red and I think it'll make a better color for this project. And I'm gonna see what happens if I just mix a little bit of vermilion with the scarlet. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. That's just what I wanted. So I'm gonna go over that again. This pile for the lightest color on the left side of the flowers is white plus a tiny speck of that bright red that we originally had out, the vermilion, and then a little speck of this scarlet red. Yeah, that's and it's gonna make a much prettier little coral color that has a little more pop to it, not as pastel. So the dark, the medium color is gonna be pretty much the same. We're gonna use scarlet plus vermilion plus a little white. Wow, what a big difference that made. And a little more white, so it's a, a medium color. happy with that medium that's very very nice and then for the dark color I'm going to go probably the same thing scarlet and vermilion and to darken it up I'm going to put a little of your purple red in there really take it down a notch a couple notches might add a little more vermilion to bring that up a little bit there we go that's nice I'm gonna take a little of that out. I don't want it to be a blackish kind of oxblood color. It's just kind of a nice deep corally cherry red almost. 
Something else we could do, because I do feel like this first color we made is looking a little pastel, you know, a little, a little like chalky. I might add just a little yellow in it, see if we can't get it to have a more of a coral look. There, I like that, it's a little richer. Sometimes a color can look either too gray or too uh, white, you know, too pastel. Okay. So I just added a teeny, a teeny bit of yellow to that one. Just here, you want some? I've got some here. Probably just a speck of that. Not all of it. All right, I'm going to start with the left side and I'm gonna pick up that really fun coral color. This is, looks a little different than the ones I did, than the one I did the other night, but I believe I did this with my set of oils. So the colors are just a little different. We can still fix that up a little bit. There we go. So the light color, my light color was a little too orangey. Yours looks good. I'm gonna put the lighter color on the left side and this time I'm just kind of dragging down long brush strokes. In the middle, same thing. I'm just kind of, the petals are kind of long, soft, soft smooth color so sort of doing like we did on the base where there's a stripe of the light a stripe of the medium and then i'm going to come in with this kind of a dark stripe at the back side in the darker area so we have the kentucky derby coming up here in a couple weeks there'll be lots of tulips and roses around town and i was going to be painting inside one of the finish line suites, one of my live event paintings. But we ran into some technical problems with the officials at the track and all the gear that I needed to bring in. So you're not doing it? I don't think I'm gonna do it. Oh my gosh. Well, they, they have an issue with how many vendors they can let in and how many passes they can give out and all that kind of stuff. So maybe if we started earlier in the year, there was a wonderful family from Texas that wanted me to paint inside their suite and paint a picture of all of them cheering for the for the horses and I got carried away and I just saw something I wanted to do. I had a little bit of white and a little yellow in it. I wanted to put these little we'll come back and do that later, but that's what I was talking about, those pretty highlights. I'll talk about those later. I just put up there's probably gonna put two little highlights on there. When I saw the highlights on the on the roses I thought, oh my goodness, we need some more highlights on the leaves. Yeah. So now, inside the top of those wine glasses, those tulips, I'm going to start with maybe the lighter shade around the edge, and we're going to go kind of more like cert like we drew it, kind of circular, or oval. Kind of just drawing those big ovals. So don't be afraid to get that dark pretty dark. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm going to go back and just kind of drag this brush and the paint into those oval shapes again. I'm kind of capping off the top of those tulips. Then I'm going to go to the medium shade. And again, I'm just following that circular shape or oval shape. And I've got to make some more of that. So I started with the light and then I jumped into the medium, which is more. And you see, I'm doing them kind of boring at first, just like parallel little ovals. And then we'll start squiggling them. I'm gonna put some dark in there because there's always some pretty darks down inside the middle of those flowers. So Morgan, this, well, I guess it's been a lot of years since you've been here for Derby Week, right? Yeah. There's a lot of activity around town. Mm -hmm. And you see what I did there? I just kind of started to draw the line of the front of the petal 
just kind of cutting through that oval. And I got a little long in these shapes. Morgan and I talked about that earlier. These little wine glass shapes got a little too long. So uh, I may get a Q-tip before we come back and finish and I can show you how I want to, this pretty little bowl shape at the end of each tulip, I kind of went I almost pointed. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some of that length off. But I will do that in the next step. Uh, this time for right now, I'm gonna add a couple little highlights, almost whitish, I'll get some more white. I'm just going to even just drag, see what happens when I just drag some pure white up in there on, on the very left corners of these flowers. And it's got to be, you got to drag it very gently so it doesn't get into the paint underneath. So that's the trick. As gently as I can pull that paint across here without even fairly touching the paint beneath it is how you get those light highlights. And then I'm going to start kind of ruffling those petals. about all I can do right now until we come back to the next step because truly what I need to do is cut some of the length off of here and I'm going to go get some q-tips. If you have any q-tips at home there's some other things you can even use a little bit of a rolled up paper towel. You can even try to take some of it out just with your knife just kind of take that paint away. But I'll take a break and we'll let you all get caught up. We're going to finish getting all the little details of the flowers leaves, vase, everything done in the next step, which I call final editing. Okay, we're back to do our little final touch-ups and I got some Q-tips and I also went and grabbed this tool that we call the wipeout tool. So it has this, this end on it that you can um, scrape out up some paint. But if you subscribe for a while, you'll end up receiving one of these in one of your boxes. But in the meantime, if you don't have one, you just take a Q-tip and just wipe out. Take the other end of the Q-tip and get a little more paint out of there. And then I just didn't like how long and pointy my tulips were. So the Q-tip will simply do that. And then I'm gonna come back with some of that green and just kind of shorten the shape of those. It's a prettier shape too, up to me. And fill in down in here. So now's the time where we, Morgan probably was pretty diligent about it as she was going through the painting, but I didn't fill in all those little yellow lines. So I'm gonna go back and just take the tip of the brush and spread that paint up towards the blue background or down towards the blue background. Get rid of those lines. And that's where you have to go a little slower so you don't blend, pick up a whole bunch of blue paint. Get a little bit of paint on your brush and you can just kind of spread it. Sometimes you don't even have to cover some of them up. They look nice. I think too many undone edges probably look not, not as nice. But I'd like this leaf can come down to a prettier little point right here. And I did take white and just some of my yellow and made a really pretty highlight color. And it's so pretty, just kind of drop that on the tip of a tip of a leaf or on the top of one. Maybe in the middle here a little bit. I want to make sure it looks like my flowers have stems. So I'm just going to kind of make sure they have a little stem color in there. I don't feel like I finished getting the tops as roughly and soft and pretty as I wanted them, the tops of each flower. So I'm going to come back there 
and just maybe come outside the line a little bit. You know, I was being very careful not to get up in the blue, but now I'm gonna go swirl up into that blue a little bit so the petals look kind of more ruffly. Maybe some of that medium color in there. And my dark got really dark, so I might just get a little lighter color in there. I'd like to come back with more of that white ruffle color. That white highlight, just little white highlights. And then I want to soften that dark. I, I said, you know, we had to have some dark down inside the middle the top of these. And I'm just going to soften that a little. It's a little harsh what I put in there. Well, maybe a lot harsh. Maybe I'll get a Q-tip and take some of that off. The nice thing about oils is they're very pliable and uh, flexible and you can work with them for quite a while. They're not going to be drying on you as you work like acrylics do. And I think I'm almost done with touch-ups. So Morgan, you wanted to get a little bit of difference between here and here. I think what you, what you can do is take a little bit of the ultramarine blue. I'll give you what little bit I have left here. Almost blue on cream. And then see how I brushed some of that darker blue right along this very bottom edge? Yeah. And that made these two colors separate. And I think that I'm done enough at this point to maybe meet everybody back in the foyer and talk about the painting. And I hope you all enjoyed it. We'll see you back in the foyer in a minute. Okay, here we are back in the foyer to discuss our project. And it was a fun one. It was. Morgan definitely decided that she liked her flowers a little pinker. So I did mine on kind of that corally pop of color and she liked this pretty soft pink. And there's so many pretty shades of tulips that that's just fine. <laughs> Here's the original that I did the other night. And so we've got them all looking pretty good. Like I said, I had 10 ladies in here the other night and all 10, in fact, I should lay them out here. I'll, I'll clip that in at the end of the video, the, uh, all the finished products and everybody did a really good job. So hopefully the way I teach and the way I'm walking you through these step-by-step, -step, it's making it easy for you. And if it's not, then just let me know and I can help you through some steps or um, send you some uh, information online and we can keep working together to, to learn. And Morgan's come a long way. And I, like I said, I'm looking forward to trying to decide what I'm going to do for next month's paintings. And I think they're always fun and colorful and cheerful. And we hope you stick around and we'll see you next month. Bye.